Hi, this is Dr. Sandra Baston from the University of Kentucky Cooperative Extension Service, and with me is Ann Hall Norris. Hi. And this is part B or part C, whichever way you want to look at it. We're going to do um, how to pressure can vegetables. Remember, all fresh vegetables go in the pressure canner. Um, we've made salsa, and we've talked about the equipment in two other videos. And so now we're going to do carrots. We're using the recipe in the Ball Blue Book, which says that for quarts, we need to pressure can them for approximately or exactly um, 35 minutes. The time is actually different for pints. You really want to pay attention to the recipe. And we're going to raw pack these. They're going to go into the jars cold. And so the recipe will tell you exactly for pints and quarts. And sometimes it's different for raw pack and hot pack. OK. so. We've already sliced up our carrots because we didn't want you to watch us do that. Um, if we had our handy dandy um, funnel, we would use that, but I, I have a wide mouth container for a jar, and that, so that's pretty easy to get your um, foods in. Um, we're going to cover these with hot boiling water before we put them in, and so those um, we've got some hot water going on the, the um, stove, and we also have um, the right amount of water in our pressure canner, usually one to two inches. My particular uh, uh, little book says that I need to have two inches, and inside of that, there's also a nice little line for me to go by. So this is going to be a one inch, and I'm going to use my one inch head space, which um, is right about here, and I need just a few more, and this one, just a couple. There we, we wanna, go. We want to adjust it after we add the water. Yeah, too. we're going to adjust yeah. it again. And then I'm going to add um, hot boiling water up to the same head space, which is one inch. Now, I could have added salt to these. I could have made these uh, brown sugar based. Um, there are recipes for both of those, but you don't have to add salt in this. Con um, in this uh, type of recipe if you don't want to. If we were fermenting sauerkraut, we would need to have the salt. And if we were, um, uh, like in our salsa, we had to have the vinegar, whereas we don't have to have the vinegar here. So I should have a one inch head space. I've gone just a little bit over, no problems. I pour a little bit out. I am going to see if I can get some of those air bubbles out there. And I don't know if you yeah, can, can see the air bubbles, bubbles coming up, but um, there, there's always air bubbles. I made a little bit of a mess, didn't mean to, but, and you'll see that some of this is, uh, they're going down just a little bit. So, what do you think, Ann Hall? I think that looks pretty good. So, we've got an inch head space there. That's what that looks like. I'll get your jars and lids. We were not prepared. Okay, so I'm taking out the bubbles again. And many people talk about their green beans, that they can't, um, that they lose water on top of their green beans, and that's because they haven't got out the, all the little air bubbles that are down below out. So you're, you want to do it gently so that you're not tearing them up, but my, my carrots are a little bit harder than green beans, so I'm not having troubles with that. But you see how uh, they pack down a little bit more, and um, so I'm not going to have the problem of, um, losing um, my moisture. So we'll add just a little bit more. And remember, our head space is very important because we're, uh, we want to be able to pull the right amount of pressure um, on this jar. It's going gonna, it's gonna, to uh, pull a vacuum. And if we don't have the vacuum pulled correctly, then they won't stay sealed. Usually our canned jars, after we've pressured or water bathed them, will last about two years in a cool, dry place. 50 to 70 degrees is what we suggest. So Ann Hall is um, wiping off any moisture or um, might maybe if I'd added salt, there might be salt. She's putting the lids on, they're new lids. And then she's also going to um, put these on hand tight, remember, so that we can get them off um, when we're finished. Also when we're finished, we need to make sure that we label these so that we'll know when two years are um, we've seen many houses yes. where grandma dies and the family has um, thousands and thousands of jars or hundreds and hundreds of jars 
all of which someone has spent a lot of time doing, plus the money for the goods, and they're 10 years old and can no longer be used. Um, a really good seal um, means that your food is properly canned and it is going to last. It's going to last. Mm -hmm. So we're going to put these in our pressure canner. I'm sorry I'm turning my back. And I have my two inches in the bottom up to the little line, which is nice that it's got a line for me. I don't have to guess. And then I'm going to add, Oops. remember mine has a nice little V on it. So I'm going to line up my V. See how easy that was? And now I'm going to pull it together. You can see little, puffs. Can see little puffs of steam come out as the, the water inside starts to boil. And then because it's going to become closed, it's going to um, get rid of all this air and then it's going to start building up steam, which then builds up the pressure. And remember, this is at 240 degrees instead of the 212 degrees for the boiling water bath because we want to make sure that our fresh vegetables which have a pH greater than 4.6 are, um, are safe for us to eat when we're through processing them. So we've got a few little bubbles starting to come out. The, the back button is about to The pop back up. button is yeah. just about, I see it's really starting to, to go. So when our back button pops up, that helps me know. It, it, the manufacturers have really done a lot to try to keep us from making mistakes. So there's little bubbles coming out, and it's been about three to four minutes, five maybe, sometimes take longer. Sandra, should we let it vent for a certain amount of time? Well, it depends on your canner, and your instructions will tell you, but I like to see a very thin stream of Steady air stream. and a little bit of moisture at the top, and it's starting to spit. Um, it usually takes, um, I have a canner that takes about four minutes. Um, so, and then I have a canner that takes about seven minutes. So it will depend on your stove and how much, um, how big the canner is. This is a tall one as opposed to a short one. It'll take maybe a little bit longer. But when that pops out, that, yeah, that really lets you know that we're on, on the way. See all that moisture is there at the top? Okay, so now we're going to let this build up pressure. And I'm going to watch it very carefully because I have um, a, a high heat on right now and I want to be able to turn it down but still maintain that 10 pounds of pressure. And because I have quartz, I am going to um, process them for 35 minutes. And as Ann Hall said, sometimes your pints are less and sometimes they're the same. So you need to pay attention. Uh, many times you can do half pints and um, pints and they will be at the same temperature as well. So you see this is coming up pretty rapidly and we're going to get ready to turn this down just a little bit and then start our timing. We also um, had the luxury of canning on a gas stove today. Um, I don't have gas at home and my electric burner takes quite a bit longer to bring, to, it, up. To bring it up. Yes. Yeah. And Ann Hall and I really like the dial gauge best simply because we can see the pounds of pressure that it has reached and we can keep an eye on it. We're not going to walk away and play with the kids, uh, play with the dog, um, answer the phone. Um, we are devoted to canning um, at this moment. And so you need to be um, in that fashion or that type of mindset when you're um, doing any type of canning so that you won't make a mistake. You also want to have your dial gauge checked annually. Your local extension office has a piece of equipment where they can set the lid on top of um, a little pump and they can uh, pump up your dial gauge to their one that's been calibrated and make sure that your dial gauge is reading the, the correct pressure. Well, I may have turned it down just a little bit too much. So I can't start timing until I've got it at 10 pounds of pressure. So I feel like I have it pretty well. It's going up a little bit, but I think it's going to stop right about there. 
I'm going to start my uh, watch on 35 minutes, and we'll be back shortly to show you how to turn off your canner and take out your, um, your wonderfully processed foods. The timer has gone off, and I have gone to make sure that uh, this has gone down in pressure. Um, you'll notice that it's down to zero, and then you'll also notice that in the back, my little popcock is now um, setting down. So it lets me know that the, all the pressure that had built up is gone. I can also take this off, and then I'm going to turn this, and this, this tells me to open, and I have a little arrow up here, so it tells me to turn it, and hopefully my little hands will have the, okay, have the strength. Sometimes those are more difficult than others, and then I'm going to open it away from me, and you see it's cooled quite a bit, and I can set this to the side. And then um, it looks lovely. I can't hardly wait to see these lovely carrots. I love carrots. These came from my farmer's market, by the way. And then I'm going to um, actually put them on a, a towel and allow them to sit overnight so that they can cool and pull a vacuum. When they've pulled a vacuum, you'll notice now that there's a little bit of a... Um, button in the center of the jar, but when it pulls the vacuum, that button will go down. It'll be just a little bit concave. Okay, I'm hoping that you can see that the, the water is still boiling within these cans, um, and that's quite normal, and that's another way, though, that we actually lose liquid in our jars is because this has been, and that's why we want this to cool down to uh, the temperature of the, of the room. This has been up to 240 degrees, and now we've taken it out into a room that's about 70. And so it will continue to boil, and that means we're losing some of that, um, that moisture that's covering our um, food, and sometimes that's another reason that we lose some of the moisture in our, our jars. Now, I'm going to leave these overnight. Um, 12 to 24 hours is what they recommend. And then I'm going to mark them with a, a permanent marker. I'm going to put carrots. I'm going to put um, what date I, I uh, canned them. And I'm probably going to put my initial because there may be somebody else in my family that either trades off, like Ann Hall is going to make salsa this year, and I'm going to make um, uh, the, the pickle relish. So we're going to trade off, and that's what's in our garden mm -hmm. so that um, we don't have to get every, uh, grow everything. And so there, I will know that those came from Ann Hall or it came from my mama or it came from me. So we hope that you will try to uh, can this season. Uh, we, the boiling water bath is for acidified foods um, where we have some type of vinegar or um, an acid, lemon juice added. And then we're gonna follow that recipe to a tea or we're going to do all fresh vegetables in a pressure canner. And remember, that's at a higher temperature so that it will kill uh, the toxins that could cause us to become ill or die. So we hope you'll um, see how simple this is. Ann Hall and I love to do this, and we hope that you find that same joy. Mm -hmm.